listen to the tale I tell about a fella named Coffee Cup. Bill he did her a bottom feeder, he was down on his luck. He put tweet all day while in his shit bucket, he'd admire. Wife with a belly so fat and brown, nothing more to aspire. Cog's family never liked him none, one said he's a creepy freak. Brother said he took advantage of a 14 year old and now he's in deep. Oh, Cog the cut most in the world of foes. Dancing with poverty, wearing down his toes, back brown, podgy by side. Ain't no diamond in the rough, right in his sleeve. Well, oh, poor old cock shedding tears ain't enough. He quit the sector after being the butt of the joke. Not even protected and can save him now. Cog's dreams went up in smoke. Jobless Johnny, they called him. Then he would go cry to his mommy. Cog's ego shattered, pride all tattered. No longer who he claimed to be. Now he wanders lost in shame. The shell of the bottom thief crab he used to be. A cautionary tale of a man who fell short. They know he's crying, you caught the cut now. It's never been this sober. Oh, caught the cut lost in a world of woes. Dancing with poverty, wearing down his toes. Back brown, podgy by side. Ain't no diamond in the rough, crying in his sleeve. Oh, poor old cop shedding tears ain't enough. Cog's other other brother sent three dollars you might be getting another call soon. We have had just about enough of jobless Johnny. Yeah, you know, I could tease this, but, uh, well, Paul's not the only Cog brother that I've been in contact with. And, uh, hoping for a special guest appearance uh let me see also I'm about to call him Let's see. <sighs> Sorry. I'll write this live. Ralph ahead mate number seven sent three dollars. Good to see you pilled up again the other day. Can we get a boo oh. stream too, please? It's so smart how you selectively do breathalyzers only when you volunteer to but never when called out when you're sneaking drinks. Handsome a crayon sent five dollars on Rumble. Do you think Cog is a sex pist? Yes, I do actually, uh, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, and thank you for the three dollars previously. Imagine seething so hard. <laughs> but yeah, I already talked about that at the start of the show, so you missed that. But now I'm uh, about eight weeks sober now, actually. So selectively do breathalyzers. Well, I mean, I could just sit here and do them all show. Uh, usually I do one at the beginning, and then if I go away for times, I'll do another one. But, uh, yeah, I do it for fun. Also, just to keep a check on myself. So, it's not actually about faggots like you. It's just to check myself, so. All right, now, let me see. Yeah, I know. They, they have this clip where they say I was drunk during the Spawn movie stream, which I wasn't. But they've been passing that around, and I don't know. It is what it is. I don't. Uh, people were here on that stream. They know I weren't. I wasn't drunk, so, and I took a breathalyzer. I believe I took a breathalyzer at the beginning of that movie. Not didn't take one throughout the movie, but you know, it is what it is. Now. <laughs> Does he want me to take one now? I mean, I already did one. I haven't left the desk. Uh, yeah, besides the time with BPF is the only time I didn't take it when I asked. Because I had been drinking that night. So, I think that was pretty obvious as well. All right, let me... Let me see here. 
Because we have another song. I don't think it's fully done yet, though. And then I'll then I'll bring them all. I want to play it. This is not the finished version, though. But it's from Ear Juice. It's from Ear Juice. I thought Cog would enjoy this. Playing again? <laughs> that just started playing again out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, let me go pull this up. Paul, sorry for the small delay there, Paul. Uh, I thought you might appreciate some of those tunes, though. We got to get just the right visual here. There we go. All right, now let's talk to Paul. Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you. How are you doing? Welcome to the kill stream, first off. Thank you. Now, for people who don't know you, why don't you introduce yourself? I do this with all guests. Now, I, fig I figure most people, we've been talking about a, a lot of the show, so they already know who you well, are, but introduce yourself. I'm Paul. <laughs> I'm Cog's unfortunate brother. <laughs> Dear God. Um, and, yeah, that's, that's about it. Uh, it's, it's been a bit of a journey getting here. Uh, I didn't even expect to be 
on the show talk about this stuff, but that's how life goes sometimes. Um, honestly, I'll start with a with a weird tweet that I was like, I just saw some brain cancer spreading around the internet, uh, a terrible argumentation, and I thought I'd vaccinate it real damn quick. Uh, and then Johnny got involved, and it's kind of all escalated from there, really. Now, first off, let me put this on Telegram. Uh, bro, on live now, and I'll put it on Twitter as well. All right, here's a super chat. Hold on. James Gartner sent $10 on Rumble. Oh, you got a song there, James? All right, I'll cue that up here in just a second. We'll take a little intermission maybe midway through this, and I'll play that song. Um, now, tell everybody about the, the tweet itself. Um, now... Uh, Merck, Merciavelli, Machiavelli, whatever he calls himself, yeah. uh, had, and Cog's been doing this for years, using you as a way to discredit, um, your other, your other brother who had credibly accused Cog of having sex with a 14 year old, I believe when Cog was like 29 or 30, something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, yep. and so Cog used your appearance where you, you had said some things about Mike, um, not too bad really, but, um, uh, but for people who don't know this, actually this appearance that you had on cog show where you said those things actually happened before he made the allegations, um, yeah. about, about the 14 year old, but cog still nonetheless uses that as, like a shield against those allegations and constantly yeah. cites them uh, or constantly cites your appearance on his show, which I think was only that one time. Uh, yeah. Right. And I he, did a few gaming things with him, but other than that, that was the only yeah. time he kind of used me as I say, nip it in the bud, as you would say, which is a preemptive, yes. I guess he knew what was coming kind of thing. Yes. Uh, and I didn't. So it's like, it's one of those. Uh, I felt kind of used at the end of that. Uh, but yeah, it's um, I, I didn't like it myself being used to it. It's, 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 it's the idea is that he's using poor argumentation. It's kind of like someone else. It's like it spreads like a virus. Um, and someone else is now using this poor argumentation. It's an ad hominem attack, which doesn't actually address the argument or the allegation. It's a deflection. And so I felt like uh, enough's enough. Uh, I've seen him do this a few times when his fans are doing it. That 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 virus has spread. I thought I'd vaccinate it real quick um, with uh, by explaining the situation between me and Johnny. Uh, and I, I think I did a pretty good job because uh, I was about to. Uh, it's a funny thing. I was. Uh, I realized I was talking to someone who wasn't too bright, um, and had obviously fallen for a lot of uh, Cox charms. Uh, yes. And so I was about to leave the internet. I was, I was like, well, I'm not going to get through to this person. Uh, call it a day. I don't, uh, you know, it's Twitter, whatever. I only go like usually three tweets in um, uh, these days. <laughs> if, if I haven't got through to someone after like two tweets, I'm usually like, you know, I'm probably never going to get through to you. Um, but then Johnny jumped in and so I go straight for the jugular straight away, um, which I was like, okay. Um, fine I'll, I'll just respond back to, to the nonsense you're coming out with yeah he has no chill so to speak this he brought all this on himself uh had he just let that go he could have even ignored it right uh and just, yes whatever yes. you know okay that's my bro None of this would ever happen. Yeah. right this never would have happened and a lot has happened since then that he brought on himself he went straight for the jugular mm -hmm. he started attacking you started attacking your wife started attacking your marriage started you know yep. uh, everybody's disowning him and, da, 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 and just talking mm -hmm. about all this trash and he never had to do that he brought all this on himself yeah. I, just, I just want to be clear now murky who still doesn't like me i don't think but you know the, the idiot guy you're talking about hold on Cinema sent one dollars on Rumble. <laughs> Vaxxed and Jewish. Thank you, Cinema. Uh, but he's actually left Cog's orbit since then, uh, <laughs> and so I think he actually has seen the light uh, as far as that goes. Uh, now I don't know about if he's seen you know every bit of the light or whatever, but uh, he's had a bit of a bit of a falling out with Cog over Cog attacking Raven. 
uh, who's in the chat. Okay. Uh, so I think maybe he did. He did see the light. Now let me. Let me. Uh, we got some stuff to talk about here. We did. Mm-hmm. We did a little bit of list uh, listing before, but what was it like? I, I'm gonna do my Larry King thing here. What was it like growing up with Cog? Um, it, it's it's a funny one because I was I'm like ten years his senior. Um, so he missed ten years <laughs> of like our lives um and growing up with him is it was, it, was, it was fine it's like he just was a bit weird a bit distant sometimes um but all in all i didn't spend too much time with him because i moved out of the house when he was i think about eight years old um so i was like 18 when i moved out um uh, which is where he <laughs> comes up with the uh, the crazy list story that he had which was some ex-girlfriend some big titty goth girl i was i was dating at the time <laughs> i mean i was a sucker for that so <laughs> she wasn't right in the head i know but damn um, <laughs> anyway, uh yeah that wasn't on me though i didn't t- send her around to the house i understand it's probably traumatized him or something i i don't know but that wasn't like i don't know uh, how how am i somehow responsible for the actions of someone else i i have no idea so yeah, it's 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 a bit. He was a yeah. He's just one. He was just like I don't didn't really know him growing up. It was more after he left home. I, I kind of knew him. So okay, so you're ten years his senior. Didn't really like have the you know experience of growing up side by side. Um, yeah. So okay, let me go from there. So it's after you grew up, you you left it there. You you kind of got to know him, I guess, a little bit. Okay. Better. Well, so after after there. we left home, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we, I, I mean, I did a, a small little like gaming thing, uh, which was like gaming events, just fighting games stuff. And he got involved with me on that, um, and he was always kind of trying to play me and uh, my brother Mike off against each other uh, quite a lot. In fact, in fact, I think that did actually create quite a wedge between us because it, it, it's like you expect you can trust your brother but he's giving you like half the story or he's, he's saying things and you're like oh really someone's saying that stuff about me you have my back kind of thing he's like it, it just causes friction uh and there was a lot of that going on um and eventually i i, it's, I was i was at the time i ended up in hospital it was like they were trying to take he, he was trying to take the 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 idea the concept the business over uh, I, it, it's it, it didn't actually the business didn't actually go anywhere. I did have offers to continue it down in London, but I, I rejected them because it was such a stressful experience, uh, especially working with him. It was it was really tough. A stressful experience working with Cog. I can't imagine. Um, yeah. Now you mentioned your your streaming, gaming streaming, and and, and your endeavors there. Now one of oh, Cog's boy. one of Cog's talking points last week during his absolute meltdown. Was that yeah. uh, you were using this to relaunch uh, your your streaming career, and that you were trying my to do three it. year old dead yes. streaming career? Yes, yes. That, yes that no. this was all a <laughs> master stroke, and you picked Cog out of all people uh, to launch it. Who it, was getting like forty viewers nowadays, and I, I, that doesn't really seem like a winning strategy. But could you talk no. a little bit about your current streaming endeavors, which I don't think you have any? But well, it, he's connecting dots in a coloring book uh, with that one because I have no plans to stream. By all means, if you want to check out the channel and look at my archives, um, knock yourselves out. I, I think some of them are quite fun, but I, I don't really care about the streaming. Like I honestly don't have the energy for that anymore. And it, it kind of, um, I enjoy playing video games uh, like most people, but it's a very different experience when you're playing to an audience there's expectations you're you're playing to time limits uh and i found that kind of took the enjoyment out of it for me um so i kind of knocked it on the head on that one and then also life came up in general um so yeah it was it was one of those it was it was an idea i had at the time i tried it out it didn't work out because i just it like i said it took the enjoyment out of something i i truly enjoyed and that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, and I don't know. The whole talking point from Cog in the first place was retarded. And he's showing your streaming schedule, and he's like, he's got a stream planned for Thursday, and it's uh, oh, literally a God. three-year-old streaming. It's a three-year-old schedule. streaming schedule. <laughs> yeah, you can even tell the last video went off of this lit because what happens with Twitch, it just keeps moving it to the next week. 
kind of thing unless you personally go in and manually change it uh so yeah that, that was a bizarre theory that was thrown up there. I, I couldn't care about the clout at all it's is i mean i just kind of just want him to just get some help really he needs it badly he just does, see a therapist dude he does need some help i've talked about this before but you know of course he's been obsessed with me for like four or five years now uh and we did have some back and forth he used to come on the show back in the day mm. and i and i yeah. think he thought i should feature him more or, or something like that and then there was a debate scheduled uh between me and somebody else and it was supposed to be on keemstar's channel and then mm. keemstar decided he didn't want to host it and cog um, said he would host it, and the other participant said they were in to do it on Cog's channel. And I said, well, I don't even want to talk to this person anyway, and if it's not going to yeah. be on Keemstar's you know, gigantic channel, then I have no reason to do this, Cog. Yeah. Uh, and he got really upset about that. Oh, he doesn't handle rejection well at all. I could tell. He doesn't handle rejection, and the main reason for that is probably because he's been rejected quite a lot. Well, it uh, must be because he's been obsessed with me ever since. Now, you know, if somebody wants to go at me, I'll certainly go back at them. But that's where this all started over me. And I explained it to him why. And I'm like, nothing against you, Cog. But I didn't really want to talk to this person anyway. And if it's not going to be on this mega platform, then mm -hmm. I have no reason to do it. Like, I'm not trying to eat. And he took it as me like, oh, oh you're attacking my business, mate. And uh, this will be a big show. And, da, da, da. and it's like, well, I don't have to do it, right? Like, I have my own free will. Yeah, you have a choice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it wasn't really my preference to do it anyway. It was just, you know, going to be more exposure for me on a bigger channel. And mm -hmm. that was the only reason I was going to do it. So he's been obsessed with me ever since. Of course, you know about Portugal We'll talk about that stuff as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, dragging my children into his show, uh, you know, t t t talking about. It's, that, that kind of stuff is just not of his goddamn business. Well, it just is. And it's Don't just, bring kids into it, man. It's They've got nothing to do with it. It's low. Whatever beef you got between yeah. you two, the kids have got nothing to do with it. That's just, just so low. And literally, you know, monetizing my my son and, and and all this like it's just, yeah, it's fucked. I don't know what to say, but it all started. Oh, yeah. it all started because of that. Now, okay, let's go back. Let's rewind it a bit. So you got okay. you got to know him a little bit growing up. The the streaming with him thing yeah. didn't work out. Um, when did you eventually uh, have a falling out with Cog and why? Oh, if, you can, if you want to uh, go into it, you don't. You can tell as much or as little. As you I can. I, I I can go into it. Uh, basically, he got really weird uh, and creepy uh, around. I I met someone online, um, and he started like really trying to break us up in a weird way. I I didn't understand it. Um, he started kind of uh, going around like I was just playing video games with this person. I met, which is my current wife, uh, as most people know, is Sam. Uh, Samantha Slime Shop, that's a handle. Uh, but yeah, we we uh, we we're, were working things out. It was like it's, it's online dating. It's like it's nothing's really real until you meet a person. So we were kind of just kind of figuring things out. Uh, and he comes in, he's like kind of trying to, you know, pushes to commit or whatever. We're just like, we're still just figuring this out. We're just having a bit of fun, dude. Like, and then he's like, we're just playing video games. And he'd be like, I need to play video games. Why are you playing video games with that? There was a lot of stuff. And, and please deny this because we have plenty of receipts of him just basically stalking me and Sam, just wanting to spend time together. Like, that's, that's a normal thing that most people who are trying to get to know each other of attraction to each other try to do is they just try and you know get away from people and just try and you know figure each other out and he just couldn't have that he he had to be in, involved in every situ situation so it got to a point where uh one day he decided to without uh, while i was sleeping uh take my now wife uh by the time we were still figuring things out take her into a voice chat and now she believed this was a private voice chat where they could just have a private conversation no, 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 no. He invited most of his Discord into the voice chat to then berate her to a point where she was in tears, uh, to which I then find out about this later on. Um, he then uh, brings us both in again. Uh, to try, I'm like, what the hell's going on? 
Uh, he then braces both um, and actually mutes me so he can do it. I'm sure a lot of people yes. understand the frustration of him muting you while you're yes. actually trying to have a conversation. It's just rude and it's intellectually dishonest to the highest degree um, because he just wants to control the conversation. Um, so at that point, we were just like, you know what, fuck this guy. You know, really done. And we, we, we went, we were getting, like, but then she actually came over. And it's like, we, we, we tried, we really tried with this guy to try and, you know, b you know, make it work and, and make it, you know, yeah. you know, because he's, he's your family. Yeah. 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 So we go out for dinner, uh, with him and, and Thieves is who is one at a time. And we think we've had a great night. You know, you've gone out, we've had a good night. We thought we'd had a laugh. And then next second he's folding me up, giving me a load of shit. Uh, like, like we're the worst people ever. Like, we're just like, what? What, what happened? Like, uh, it was bizarre. We just, we thought the night went well. And clearly not. I mean, he's already spoken about it on his channel, about the curry. I mean, curry was bad. It was a bad curry house. There's a better one literally just down the road from where I live. <laughs> like, it was terrible. Uh, I, and she asked for prawn biryani and got an egg biryani with a fried egg. And I believe it's supposed to be boiled eggs on a biryani. So if it's an egg biryani. So, yeah, that was uh, that was weird. Um, so, yeah, it yeah, that was that was uh, that was a very strange experience. Even even though the food was bad and stuff, and we were bantering, which he didn't seem to understand that people who are close can actually just you know cuss at each other uh, and and have a laugh with that. I mean that seemed I mean jokes seemed to completely escape him entirely. I don't know what that, what that is. He just seems to go over his head. He takes things so fucking seriously. He'll take a joke seriously, and you're just like it's just a fucking joke. Jesus Christ, what's wrong with you? He does that so, all yeah. the time with everybody. Yeah, he does that <laughs> all the time. He just goes over. It's like he just doesn't get how normal human beings communicate, especially when they're close. Uh, I'm sorry if he's never had someone that close that he could talk that way with. Uh, I can only apologize for his sad existence. Okay. <laughs> Not... Now, you mentioned thieves. <laughs> you mentioned thieves. Let's talk yes. about thieves a little bit. Okay. Okay, uh, so yeah, what do you want to talk well, about? Well, um, why don't you start it off, and then I'll play off that. Okay, well, a funny thing about Thieves. Uh, she was actually a little girl. Uh, I even said that to her at the time. Nice um, tits she as had well. Her um, well, you know, I, I tend to try and not check out my, <laughs> my brother's misses, you know. Uh, anyway, I'll just give her a compliment on my own. But yeah, She but was no. reasonably attractive. She was reasonably attractive. Um, uh, but she was a nice girl. You know, she came across as, as a nice enough girl. Um, the funny thing is, though, it, it's uh, I, I gotta wonder what Johnny did to her because she moved him to the middle of fucking bumfuck nowhere and then dumped his ass. What did he do to hurt her? Now we've got a few ideas. I mean, there is uh, there is actually evidence that he was uh, doing the whole. I think it was drama queen at the time, the online thing, which is yeah, I've, I'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, but the drama queen thing, he was actually going on dates with thieves at the time in real life, which is super weird. He was actually going on proper dates. Uh, we actually have timestamps and stuff on that, so we know that was going on. Um, so, so you're telling yeah, me he was cheating on thieves while he was with her? It was a, I mean, I mean it's I, an e thing, but still, that's still cheating. I mean, it's it's an e thing, yeah, but yeah, according to Johnny's <laughs> lore of the internet, that is cheating, uh, the worst kind. Um, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess he was, you know, planning his life with that other one, wasn't he? And there he is going out for drinks with uh, thieves. So, um. But yeah, I, I, I imagine uh, that wasn't the only time he pissed her off. And he, she just, it's like she planned the whole thing. She takes him to the middle of nowhere. Christmas Day. Oh. Christmas Day dumps his ass. Oh. Uh, and I can only imagine, like, and, and here's the funny bit a lot of people don't know, is that later on, like, he had, like, a week to get the fuck out um, because her new fella, who was a real man, was going to come around and just, and he did. He came around and actually just threw him out. Uh, he's, and I know this from a, from a very good source because uh, he blabbed it all to them <laughs> like an idiot uh, because 
I don't know, I guess he thinks he was confessional or something. But then he was like, oh, I'm homeless, but it's okay. Um, I'm talking to this girl on the phone, and I should have a place to live by the end of the week. Which I believe is his new wife. So that's uh, that's interesting. <laughs> so we knew, of course, and uh, the the cog Christmas cockery uh, is a famous uh, bit of Killstream lore because literally, for, oh. those, for those who don't know, he he had this meltdown stream on Christmas Day, and yeah. he portrayed it as thieves was cheating on him, and she had sent these. Uh, I, I guess I don't know if she was fully nude or whatever, but it sent some um, pictures. I to think she guy. just wanted a real man. Yeah. she wanted a real man, and then she went so. out and got one. Yeah, and that's what happened. And well, he tried yeah. to get her fired from her job uh, because I guess they were co. Well, of course he did. Yes, of course he. Did. As soon as he found out there was another man and he was dumped, that's exactly what he did. He went straight looking through the phone. Who is this guy? How can I destroy his life? That's exactly what he tries to do. Anyone who upsets him, slightly upsets him, disagrees with him, even life ruination. That's that's what he goes for every single time there is no chill like you said it's literally oh you've crossed me therefore i have the right to destroy your life which is absurd it's absurd no he doesn't and it's not even you know go, go online bitch about something whatever you know i've done that but to, you know he's actually trying to get her fired uh from from her job and sending these messages around like i, I who she, does that I don't what know. What kind of sad fuck does that? Most men, you know what men do? Move on. Just move on. Well, yeah, and he Just obviously move the fuck on. was already what talking to somebody else. What did you think you were going to get out of that? How did you yeah. think she was going to come running back when you tried to destroy her life? No. You dumbass. And then he, which is arguably even dumber, he, he went online and told everybody this. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's, uh, that's I, I don't get that. I don't get that either. But, um, so thieves, what what else? I, I, I oh, I do, sorry, I do get that. He uses family for content, so of course he did. Like he uses anything he can for content. He's that desperate for content. He will throw his ex girlfriend under the bus. He'll go for family doxing. He will do anything. I mean, the people near and dearest to him right now, watch your back because he will. If you piss him off in any way, you throw him out, you divorce him. He coming after you with everything he's got. And zero, there's no, no, there's no life. Li- yeah, there's no life living in fear. This guy, man, you don't want that. Now you mentioned, you know what? Before we go to his new woman and Dan and all that, uh, let's talk about Drama Queen uh, a little bit. What do you? Okay. What do you know about that situation? And we could even the- talk about Alaska <laughs> too, and maybe we will after. Yeah. Um. But there, there's several women here in, well, in Cog's life. But what, yeah, oh, what about, yes. But what about Drama Queen? So Drama Queen was an interesting one because he was talking about it quite openly uh, to me. He's like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move to America. Yeah, if you know what, what the American flag is about, it was yeah. a stupid dream of, I'm going to move to America, get a wife, get fence, and 2.5 kids. Uh and he still believes it, I guess, because he still holds the flag up high behind him, even though he lives in England and he's not American. If he was an expat, I could get it. But yeah, it's uh, it's this weird fascination with America, and he was obsessed with it at the time, which is why he's flat. I'm sure you've all seen his rudeness. But yeah, he, I literally went around once and said, yo, you might want to tidy up. He's like, oh, well, I'm going to America. I'm going to move in with this woman and her kids and all this shit. I'm like, what? He's like, I've been talking to a kid on the phone. Like, why are you talking to some other dude's kids on the phone? Like, why why are you doing that? Oh, it's all right. I'm going to move to America. It's like, I said, dude, just tidy your place up. It might fall through. You've got all these plans that it might fall through. Uh, But yeah, it's funny because everyone was going cog the cook when that finally got exposed. Uh, But one thing you guys don't know about is he actually had a girlfriend called Hannah. Really? Um, yeah, and it was he was a cuckoldery relationship. Um, she he knew that she was with a guy, um, and who was fucking her, and Johnny was quite happy to fuck her. And she would come around. She was like skinny as a rake. She had she, she, like she, I saw her walking around in a bikini, but she had nothing. She's like flat as a board. It's like it's like what the hell? But yeah, he even bought a cat called Zelda for her. 
He had a swimming pool party one day, which I thought was really absurd in a flat in Manchester. Uh, but yeah, he he uh, he knew damn well she was going back to this guy, and she was she was with him, uh, which is why he never ended up with him. Or at the end of the day, now I, I raised this. I said, "Well, it's a good job they don't know about the whole Hannah situation." And his response was, "Well, I was the bull in that relationship." <laughs> I'm not even shitting you. Those were exact words. So, but I don't think the bull kind of, I'm not pretty sure they usually go with the bull rather than the guy, you know, the, the, the cook. So she went off with the cook, I guess, at the end of the so-called relationship. But yeah. So yeah, he is a cook. That's, that's absolutely true. The bull. Yeah. And uh, they don't usually buy. Sorry, like, sorry, uh, sorry. He's a bull. He's a yes, bull. Yeah. 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 That makes up. That makes all the difference. Buying cats and things like that too. Um, yes. Now, so this was, this was simultaneous with the drama queen thing. This was going on too. Or just, well, that's after, it was, after. yeah, it was, it was, it was a while beforehand. It was, it was like years beforehand. So it wasn't happening at the same time, but it would appear that that kind of behavior kind of, I guess crossed over to the internet. Um, but it was, it was it was an old relationship that one. But I, 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 I you know, it's something he did. And when when it was all going on, it was like, oh, it's a good job they don't know about that. It's like he it was like, I was a bull. It was just like the way he rationalized it. I was like, oh, okay. I just left it. There's no point, you know. There's no point. Just shake your head and move on. <laughs> it's like whatever. That's it. It's like, well, okay then, if that's what you believe me. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I guess we all make really big mistakes. <laughs> now, <But> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, what about Alenska? Now, this this is a bit of lore that I know about. This is oh, another boy. person who lived in America, uh, and I think she maybe had immigrated to America or something. But she lived there. I think she had her citizenship, though. I think she ended up getting her citizenship. But yeah. But he was going to. This is when I first started knowing about Cog. Uh, he was going to move again. He, he had plans to move. He was going to move to America. That's right. correct. That's an, uh, and another was, theme. Again, yeah, he was talking to her children. Again, yeah. This is this seems to be a Recurring running theme, theme here of him. Yes, yes. The, of him uh, constantly wanting to talk to these women's kids, which I always feel is weird as fuck. I don't know why, but yeah, yeah you take it and leave it, but that's how it is. Um, but yeah, apparently she was with her fella, but not really. They were divorced, uh, but he owned the house, so he could just come around wherever he wanted. At least that's the story she told Johnny. Um, wow. And that was a toxic relationship. Um, he, 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 Johnny emulates every woman he's with he'll become like them. with thieves it was he, you'll notice in these streams he was drinking a lot more than he is now or was before um that's because thieves did happen to drink quite a lot um then you will find with this new wife he's wearing the hugo boss the chav gold and all that bling and ting um because he wants to you know fall into that kind of like emulate her and this is an ongoing thing with with Alenska it was just really social decorum completely fell to shit um I was one day there he was eating out of his, I think he called it chips in America yeah. um and they he's there crisps there his, but yes they, they call him Chris it yeah so he's there picking his nose and eating it and I'm like that's disgusting but he's like you yeah, don't care and then he put his hand in the bag and goes, do you want some? I was like, nah, I'm all right, mate. <laughs> just like, no, that's, that's just nasty. But yeah, it was a really, really toxic relationship. I think like, that's when his flat really went to shit because he was so, this is the one. This is what I'm going over. This is definitely it this time. I'm definitely going to America uh, to be with this, this woman and her children that aren't mine. Um, so, and yeah, that fell through. I felt it real bad. So when he's showing you his house, it's literally because he just didn't do shit because he believed he was moving to America. And that was his excuse for letting his house. That was his. Into, yeah, that okay. was his excuse. Yeah. And he used to. Talk I told to him those... to tidy you up. Yeah. Well, Sorry. <laughs> he didn't listen. Uh, and yeah. so, so the Alinska thing, for those who don't know, he used to talk about it all the time. And it was like a guaranteed mm. thing. Like you said, uh, I'm going to America. Like, he has this obsession with being American. 
that obviously still last to this day. You know, most, uh, you know, Englishmen, uh, British, however you want to say it, um, that I talk to are proud of being English, right? Like, they, you know, they, yeah. don't, they don't. Oh, yeah. They don't have an upset. Yeah, an know? empire for fuck's exactly, sake. Exactly. Come that's on. what I'm saying. The rich history of England is like, a lot more history yeah, than we England Yeah, we predate America. America by yeah. like hundreds of years. <laughs> yes, like. that's what I'm saying. We brought uh, civilization to the world, motherfuckers. Yes, that's what. Right, <laughs> most people are proud of of being English, British, however you want to put it. Uh, but he seems to have this just weird obsession with wanting to be an American, which he never yes. will be. Like I, for instance, yeah. I live in Mexico, um, but I I'm not Mexican. <laughs> Yeah, right? yeah, and I won't be Mexican even if I were to get a Mexican citizenship. I have a residency. Even if I were to step it up, yeah. you know, and get a Mexican citizenship, I would still be an American, right? Uh, and I wouldn't yeah. have the Mexican flag behind me and and all this or that. I mean, there've been some memes made and jokes or whatever, yeah. but like. You know, I'm an American. I'm proud to be an American. It's hard to be, maybe sometimes, uh, but you know, I don't have this obsession with being uh, something that I'm not, right? Like, and, and, yeah. And the the weird American thing, I, I I don't know. I just I just never really understood that at all. Um, now let's let's since we talked about Alonska, we talked about Drama Queen a little bit. We talked about thieves, and the Christmas Day cucking. Now let's talk about Dan, Protector Dan. Now, oh God. Cog's current wife is the yeah. sister of Dan's wife. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. So, do you first off, do you know how he met Dan? No. I don't know how he met Dan. I imagine he's some kind of weed link. <laughs> uh, but sorry, he, he's someone you get struck on. Uh most likely. Uh, or he might be an old fan of his. I'm really not sure. So you don't know how they linked up, but No, but it was very weird that he moved so quickly within a week down there. Like, I don't know. Was was he actually chatting to this girl and Dan before Thieves broke up with him? So who was really cheating on who according to Johnny Logic? Yeah, the timeline doesn't add up. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's weird, right? Who, I mean, he goes and puts himself on this pedestal. It's like, dude, you are like, you're not some innocent victim. Like, you usually are the reason this shit's happening. Like, take some culpability for fuck's sake. Oh, and people want me to ask this before we go further into uh, his his current wife and Dan. Um, they want me to ask about the black mold and about the about the flat that you've mentioned a few times, and he's yeah. shown off how like incredibly decrepit it was. Yeah. Um, now I was told I I don't remember where it came from last week, but um, that that was actually like a new council flat uh, when he got yes. it. Yes. Uh, oh yeah, they were brand new, brand newly built. So I didn't know that until last week. I just assumed that it was like an older it was, flat. It was a really nice place. Like the space wise, it was really nice. Like he just fucked it up. So that was all That's, him. That was all him. And just left he even, it there. He painted the he when when he was with that Hannah girl, that's when he painted the floor black. That was her idea. He did it for her. He painted the floor black so that you wouldn't <laughs> so it wouldn't look so dirty with all the dirt on it. That's that is advanced level shit, I though, I have to say. I, I'm, uh, I'm not sure why, what possessed him to paint it black, to be completely honest, but I just know that was, like, when he was with Hannah, that's when he did it. So, trying to understand my brother's brain sometimes, it's just, don't, don't try. It, it's just, like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any so sense. So, it's confirmed, though, that the flat was new and in great yes. condition when he got it. And he really oh, yeah. Yeah, he could have done it. great things. Oh yeah, he went. It went to shit. He's left for like three years with his "I'm going to America" thing. I was like, just I was like, you need to tidy up, look after the place because it might fall through. I, I understand you're in Love Land right now, and you think it's all going great, but this this stuff might not go so great. Because I already was well aware that it was a, it was a very toxic relationship that was not going anywhere. And so I'm trying to be the brother that that's nicely trying to put him down, kind of thing. Is it like, yeah. please? come back to reality and, and and accept that that this there is a possibility that it's quite high but I've realized that but that this won't might not happen live live in the world you're in and, and look after your place around you your environment 
Well, and he just refused to do that. And then he sh- he made a video of himself leaving it just in, like, the worst state possible. So whoever yeah, had he, to move he, in there he, next well, had to clean that up, or somebody had to come clean that up, right? Well, uh, if he's ever – yeah. Well, if, if he's ever homeless again, he's blacklisted. That's what happens to people who do that. The council blacklists you, which oh, is stupid. That. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is they take a note of the state that a flight is left in, it then costs the council X amount of money, uh, which is usually with it for the state of that place, probably costs about maybe 600 pounds, maybe a grand, depending on how long it took to clean the place out. Um, and then he's blacklisted as a guy who leaves the place a shithole when he leaves. That's why you always make sure you tidy up the whole place, make it look spick and span, because then if you have any problems in the future, They'll sort you out. No problem. Because it's like, well, he was a good tenant. He's got a record now of being a shit tenant. That's not a good record to have. No, it's not. Uh, but they wanted me to hit on that. So I'm, I'm glad somebody in chat uh, somebody in chat brought that up. And, w- and what about, has he, has he been, there's been a long running rumor that uh, Cog is on the dole uh, somehow there. Uh, um, okay. Do you know that? Uh, don't tell me lies. I'm not asking you to make anything up. But No, uh, no. You know, he had a he had a broken arm for like two years, and there was speculation he was milking that for benefits, and that perhaps he's still getting some kind of benefit. I I, I don't know if you know anything about that or. In all honesty, I don't know, okay. but at the same time, I don't think he is. I'll I'll, okay. I'll give Cherry where Cherry's due. Uh, I think he has been living off his donos, um, and but he's also I mean he's not on any real record of, of tenancy or anything. So uh, I'm going to go with Gartner tax evasion. Dollars on very wrong. easy in Don't that situation because you'd have to disclose that kind of information. He doesn't really have it. Like he's kind of trying to live off the radar but, uh, and probably for good reason. Right. Yeah. Uh, very good reason. Uh, now we, we mentioned Dan uh, and his, his wife's sister who is now Cog's, wife what what do you know about that situation of course we saw the turban photo and everything uh last well, they week. all live together they do all live they together. All, yeah they all live together now why is he loath to admit that uh because it probably doesn't look good he's he's literally like the bitch in the household like he's probably the lowest rung if you're going for a, a house a hierarchy like, I'd, I'd argue that it's actually Dan's wife that wears the pants in that family, quite clearly. And I think she's probably getting to a point where she's getting fed up with shit as well. Also, and him creeping around that daughter. I was just about yeah. to bring that up. I was just about to bring that up. And he keeps talking about. Uh, so it's confirmed they all live together, by the way. We just confirmed that. Um, and he, he can only. It can only be described as a creepy obsession with Dan's daughter who is not Cog's daughter right like at all no and no he he acts like she is uh yeah and and he is very creepy about her around her involves her in in the show has her like sing songs about PPP and all this all this that's yeah it's fucked yeah well all this all this weird shit and he's on record, you know, having talked to other people's kids and, you know, tried to, I don't know. It, it's just, it's just very, it's just very creepy, Paul. Um, well, he, he tends to uh, focus on vulnerable. Uh, the, you'll notice most of the people he attacks online, uh, usually disabled um, in some kind of way. Either they've got some mental faculty issues or they're actually physically disabled. He's attacked a lot of people for that. Um, over the years, I think children is just another one. It's just another like easy, like prey, I guess, for want of a better word. Um, but it's 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 odd. It's odd. But it, I mean, if I'm going to give charity, I mean, uh, it would appear he's he's probably impotent. Uh, <laughs> the looks of things, he's not kids uh, in Indian wedding, like marriage. As far as I'm aware, you, having kids is very important. In fact, I don't believe they believe you've consummated the the marriage until you have children. Um, so, I mean, I may be wrong about that, but 
pretty sure that's that's the cultural uh, thought on it. Yeah. Um, so he's, I mean, if he was his wife, we'd all know, right? You'd have just said it's her, and you'd blamed her for the reason you can't have kids. So I'm going to go with he's the one who's firing blanks. Um, and that's why he has this fascination with kids. Like, I mean, it could be something more sinister, like, you know, but it could also just be he he really wants to be dead so much you'll steal other people's children. And that doesn't sound much better either. <laughs> so. No, it doesn't. No, it really doesn't. <laughs> he has an obsession with children, and I mentioned my own. He has an obsession with them and, and daughter and drama queens and, uh, you know, Alenska had kids too. And, like, uh, yeah, uh, and he wants to talk to them and be their daddy, I guess, or something. It's very odd behavior. I, I don't know. Now, Okay, so have you ha- have you actually met uh, his wife? No, never met. No, her. never met her. Oh no, no. They came to the the the. I'm sorry, you mentioned the Christmas gathering. That was that was rather fun. Uh, which one of my brothers actually left uh, very shortly after they arrived? I'm not going to dox any brothers' names. You know, I'm sure John knows who they are uh, because they've never really seen eye to eye with Johnny in the first place. And he brings the Birmingham bums with him. And I can imagine that was the final straw. And he just thought, fuck this shit, I'm leaving. <laughs> so I don't uh, it was a small gathering. My mother wasn't there. Uh, she was actually enjoying her own time after raising kids. Like, she had eight kids. Uh, yeah, good on her. She took some time out for herself over Christmas and went and enjoyed herself. Good on her. Uh, I love my mom for that. It was ace. Yeah, yeah I talked to her mom. Regards to what he says, I do talk to the family. I do keep in touch with what's going on. You know, it's my family at the end of the day. There's none of this. I've been rejected by the family. Yeah, we have, uh, we have, uh, we don't necessarily see eye to eye. We're a bunch of boys. It's a lot of testosterone um, and a lot of, uh, uh, what's, what's it? Um, competitiveness sure. between us. Um, so, yeah, that can sometimes bring us to loggerheads. But my mom, she kind of like is the glue that sticks us all together. And she kind of, you know, I'm, I'm genuinely interested in hearing from my mom how, how the others are doing. And I kind of do give them a, a wide berth just because they've got their own life. They've got their own kids. Life is hectic. Um, but no, I, I didn't fancy going down to that gathering um, because I knew Johnny would be there. I just can't be asked for this shit. I just can't be bothered with this nonsense. Like, he's, have you ever tried talking to him? You can't. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's why like, I, <laughs> why, why, why do I want that? I mean, you know, my mum wasn't even out of turn up. Maybe if my mum was there, but I was actually glad my mum was taking a break from it. She's she's worked her ass off all her life for us kids. She's a good woman. So you weren't banned. You're not blackballed. No, no, I from family I, I, No, I left the WhatsApp. I didn't get kicked out of it. I left it because I just. You know, it's, it's it's just one of those things. I just I just don't like WhatsApp, to be honest with you. I think it's it, it, people can find out a lot of stuff about you with Johnny on there. I was like, yeah, I don't really want to be putting my personal life in a place where the all seething eye of Johnny is, because it's a matter of time before that ends up on the internet. That's what it's like being related to this guy. I mean, if you're just a fan, you know, you know, you got a got a chance he might not get into your personal life. Maybe if you're lucky. But I'm related to him, so he could just go for all my shit. Um, so I was just like, nah, I, I, I can't be bothered. I know what he's about. And I'm not going to give him anything. It's not important that he knows anything about my life. And if the people who I care about, they're the people who find out about my life. And I'll talk to him, I'll phone him. I don't need WhatsApp. I just phone people. <laughs> Well, I have a feeling he he's not a big fan of WhatsApp anymore either. <laughs> oh, about yes. Well, the, you know, don't don't give it if you can't take it. Is where I say I've only ever done anything to that guy out of response. If he hadn't brought up my wife or me and come at me, I even you even have the receipts, Ralph. I said yes. I wouldn't come on the show. You did. I said I would just leave it and walk away because I really didn't want to do this. And I say you know I feel you know, misgivings about it, but. I He's had so the receipts because the first thing I did. Well, the first thing yeah. I did was message you, of course, and I was like, "Hey, let's do the show. <laughs> hey, let's, yeah, yeah, let's go." You were right. Okay. Yeah, you like, know, dude, that's my job, right? And this fucker's fucked with I, me I for know. years. But he re- yeah. he refused at first. He's like, "No, you know what? I'm yeah, I'm gonna keep it here." 
But let's mm-hmm. see how he reacts. And I think we both know how he would react. But I was like, if he didn't come after me and my wife, I'd been like, you know, fuck it, you know, no show. So I'm not going to go on there. I'm not going to say anything. It's like because you know, he backed off. He should have backed off, and he didn't. He he did the stupid thing. And he should know better. Which he Anonymous does. sent five dollars. Can uh, Cog actually fight, oh, or he is one giant pussy? I'll bring this up. Has he ever been in a fight in his life? Can Cog actually fight, or is he one giant pussy? And has he ever been in a fight in his life? Is what somebody asked. He's never been to the gym ever. He can't do pull-ups, and no, he can't punch for shit. That's why he took his bully boy down with him. Now. Before we get into the the pedo allegations, since you brought up Bully Boy Dan, um, Portugal. Um, actually, yeah. Cog came to confront me in Portugal. I didn't know that he had he somebody with him. You. Yeah, he stalked me. He stalked yes. Yes. you through the streets of Portugal. Yes. He got on. Let, let's go through the derangement of this. He got on a plane, bought tickets, did a stream to raise the funds for this. This was all premeditated. This is the psychosis here. Dumps on a plane to Portugal to then track you down, stalk you in the streets, and then bring some heavy with him that you've never met, never seen before, to bushwhack you with. Now, the truth is, if it was just you and him, you'd have fucking had him. Well, yeah. You'd have you beat the seen, shit out of him. You should have seen how scared he was oh, when he got up in his face. Oh, there he was. Yeah, he was. He was, he was like, please stand safe me, wasn't it, basically? Well, so there's footage of this. Um, of course, there's what he shot, uh, and he's sitting there, you know, talking shit like he's actually doing the fighting. Uh, well, I'm getting, I mean, I'm getting hit pretty hard, right? Uh, and, yeah. but if you see, there's another angle uh, from where I was, because I was live streaming at the time, too, and yeah. I'm, I'm around the corner. And you can see Dan come around from behind me and gets to my right. Now, I never mm-hmm. seen, I've never seen Dan in my life. I wasn't watching yeah. the cog stream. I had no idea who this guy was. As far as I knew, he was just somebody. Just some rando on right. the street. Yeah, yeah, just some rando on the street. And so I know Cog's around the corner. And so I go mm-hmm. around the corner and get right in his fucking face. I was like, you know, what the, you know what's up, bitch? That's yeah, yeah. what I said. Uh, and then... Out of nowhere, of course, Dan had already been stalking around me. Out of nowhere, Dan comes in and clocks me in the side of the head and, mm-hmm. and knocks me to the ground. Hard hit me. Well, that's hard. typical. That's and, typical, Johnny. He has to rig it in his favor. Yes. He knew. I mean, that's there's nothing that makes you realize he knew he couldn't fight. He knew he couldn't beat you on his own. He had to rig it. He had to have someone else do that job for him. That's and, how he, you know he couldn't have fought you on his own. Well, of course not. I mean, he's it looks like a heroin addict for one, but like yeah, but it's, it's it's like this weird admission that he's making by bringing that guy along. He didn't need to bring him. No. If he was a big man that he thinks he is, he'd have gone at you himself on his own. In fact, that's what all those lads were taught: is you fight your own fights. You don't bring someone else to do it for you. You fight your own fights. And if you can't, if you don't win, you take your lumps. Well, and it still would have been, you know, crazy behavior, but at least it would have been a man, you know, being a man about it, right? He's a cheerleader going, Dad, Dad, get him. Yeah, yeah, fuck off. He's going to beat you up. Yay, Dan. It's it's, it's sad. It was and, and the, the whole excuse is someone had to hold the camera. Dan could have held the camera. Dan could have held the camera, and you could have wailed on, on Ralph. Why didn't you do that? No, 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 no. I have to hold the camera because I guess what Dan's – retard and can't work a camera phone you, seriously it was a total it was just a total ambush in every way and he's so proud of it too oh uh, yeah and it's, oh, yeah, like, he, it's vicarious he thinks he did it yes he didn't he's like i be up ralph and he's like no you didn't you had a thug do it you're it's, that little shithead in, in like a, a like a holiday special movie the bully like he gets a bully, yes. the biggest kid in the playground, and he just hides behind him going, Yeah, yeah, and you little shit, yeah. And then and you hate him. You hate that little shit. You just like, I just want someone to knock out that big bully because the moment he's out of the picture, that guy's fucked. 
That's ex- perfect. That's basically all he is. Perfect description of Cog. And of course, one I got a hit and knocked on the ground. And Dan's a pretty big guy. He probably could have took me straight up. Yeah, um, yeah. But like, once you're on the ground, anybody's ever been in a fight. Once you get hit and knocked on the ground, like, it's pretty much over, right? Anyway, unless yeah. you're some type of MMA skilled fighter or some shit. Uh, and so I, I knew it was done once I hit the once I got yeah. hit inside the, the head. Yeah. And so I'm just sitting there, you know, getting rocked honestly just taking just, it, just yeah. taking it. Yeah. and i'm still flipping him off and i'm like you know kill me bitch like i don't give a fuck <laughs> well, he didn't knock you out no did he didn't did. no <laughs> he didn't no. knock me out he hit me in the head about 15 times or more but he did not knock me out so he doesn't have knockout power uh even though he had you know i don't even know how many uncontested well, i features. believe it was uh my brother that uh, johnny's mentioned this uh, i went to my brother because people were like oh why don't you sort this out in private well I do. I tried to sort out the Johnny situation with my family. I've tried to go through family channels and keep it private and off the internet. Um, and the first thing he said when I showed him that video is that guy can't punch for shit. No, he can't. Because, like, he could have. That's, that's what he if said. he could, he wouldn't knock me out, right? Like, I mean, I was defenseless. Yeah, yeah. I was completely defenseless. And then the worst part to me is there was this uh, Portuguese uh, lady there. And, you know, this is our hometown. And so she's trying to stop this, you know, sneak attack. And yeah, we're gonna get to that cinema. Cinema for sent one dollars yes. on Rumble. We're gonna talk about the Mandy G. Can you ask G. Paul about the Mandy G? Yeah, lore? we are. Uh, we are gonna ask about that. <laughs> um, but um, th- Dan grabs this woman who's trying to break up the fight, throws her yeah, into the middle of the street where she cracks her skull. She got a concussion mm. and had to get stitches in her head. Throws her into oncoming traffic. Now, thankfully, you know, the car stopped. She easily could have been yeah. killed, is what I'm saying, either from the head bump or getting run over yeah. in the streets of Lisbon. And luckily, she didn't. But we went to the hospital together. And when I was in the hospital, I ended up just leaving because I was like, whatever. You know, it's a wait time. I'd been to this same Lisbon hospital, another story, mm-hmm. uh, in a different time. Uh and- and so I ended up, you know, they were working on her, and I'm like, well, I'm not, you know, whatever. I'm not even that fucked up. I, I'm just going to leave. Uh, and they're like, no, you, no, don't leave. Don't leave. You know, you need a CAT scan. Da, da, da. I'm like, nah, fuck this. Uh, and so I just left and went and fired up a stream and talked a bunch of shit. Uh, but she was still there getting stitches in her head from where her head had been cracked Jesus. open. Jesus. Uh, because, because of Dan. And he literally grabbed her and threw her into the middle of the street. Uh, that's fucked up and so i always mention that part of the story because it's, it's not just about me they could have killed an innocent person well uh, you hear a scream on the video yes you hear her scream yes you hear her scream uh and i there is a warrant out for them in portugal uh and like you mm-hmm. said he's admitted on stream about lying about his address that's been suggested yep. to me that maybe i call and have that updated uh now that we know his his true whereabouts um, I don't know the level of uh, crime. To me, that's a felony assault. Uh, now, I don't know um, the level. That the problem Portugal, is but... if he isn't stopped eventually, like he's, he keeps trying to do this. He goes to the yes. Andy Worski thing. Yes. Like he's traveling around the world to assault people. This is deranged behavior. Like it's, it's absolutely Aussie insane. It, and $1 it's all $1. right. Shits and giggles. People are lying. Yeah, fuck? you're not connected. This is my family. This is my brother doing this so to me i'm like what the fuck what the actual fuck is wrong with you You, and i just wanted to get help i don't care about all this internet drama so i just genuinely he needs to see a psychiatrist or something to take meds sort your neck out something man because he's literally deranged and you know, this internet stuff, I know it can get crazy. I've been involved in some crazy shit, but, like, man, it is he's deranged. And yeah. anybody who could, you know, you sit there and his streams have been about me for, like, four years. Uh, and he'll sit there and just go through every, like, he watches every single second of my show, every single day. Yeah. And some of these shows are seven, eight hours long, right? Like, and he's just looking yeah. for, for anything or any tweet I make. Uh, you know, I talked about my cat the other day, and he's... He does a show on my cat, and it's just like what, what this the guy's. Fuck? Yeah, it's it's like this guy's clearly obsessed to an unhealthy level, and there's fucking with somebody, yeah. and there's having internet enemies, and then there's like obsession. 
Uh, yeah. Like some shit you would see in a movie about a crazy motherfucker, right? Like that's that's what it's like uh, with him. And I, I, you know, I've never understood it. And I have plenty of people I don't like online. And I talk about them on occasion, but it's not every show. It's not every day. You know what I mean? Like I don't he go wa- through their every word uh, every time they speak or their every tweet. He wants what you got. He wants what you've got. He wants your fame. He wants your status. That's what he wants. And he thinks if he destroys you, he'll get it immediately. Well, and that's it doesn't the work only that thing way. I can think is an explanation. I know it doesn't work that way, but you just <laughs> explain that to a delusional to a person with delusions of grandeur that thinks they're super famous with their 48 viewers. You try explaining that to them. Who thinks he's better than everyone else in the so called sector, even though he's not part of it, but he is, but he's not, but he is, but he's not. It just comes. Can he take a breath, <laughs> okay? It's... And realize he's not. It's, it, it's a funny thing. He's like, he, it's not like. He's not a has been. He never was. He's a never was, and he never will be. And he needs to accept that, and just accept you're you're what forty odd years old, mate. Was it thirty? Was it? Yeah, he's thirty six years old. And and I don't think you. I don't think you're gonna have to be a superstar that you think you're gonna be, mate. Just call it a day. Find something more productive to do. Something that brings joy to people. What right. a crazy idea! Well, it's clear. Don't do this this he's negative miserable. shit. He's miserable. Like. I... And again, you know, some days it's, it's tough. I mean, I'm not going to say every single day is a, f- a fun day out here, but I mostly have fun, right, doing this yeah. job. And it's clear you you watch any of his content about me or others, and it's mostly about me, but he's clearly just a miserable son of a bitch, right? Like, it's like mm. this is not yeah. bringing you any happiness. Uh, if anything, it's making you sicker. Um, and no. I don't know. Anyway, go ahead. You are going to say something. No, it's, it's, it's just like it's clearly not happening his life where it's at he's had to move into a house with a woman he's not really we know she, we know she's he's not really attracted to her because why she'd have been all over the cameras he was ashamed every single time the pitch came up with her on it because when we it was thieves she was on the camera alenska on the camera like every girl that he thought was attractive he could show off on the camera but his new wife nah, didn't even get on the camera for a moment in fact, he's been avoiding anyone finding out what she looks like, which goes to show that he's not really that attracted. This is a marriage of convenience. It works for him because it means he's got a place to live. Well, he's ashamed of her, it's clear. Um, well, yeah. And, you know, I mean, I did call her the Bombay Buffet Buster. Uh, so, it's, it's just sad. I'm proud of my wife. He can show as many ducks as he wants. I'm proud of her. Like, that that's the woman I love. Like, you know, I think she's fucking hot. I don't. I know she's not everyone's cup of tea. I don't care. That's the way it should be. Uh, yeah. By the way, you mentioned that photograph. I think. I think maybe we should uh, pull that up on screen once again. I mean, first off, could you ever imagine wearing the outfit like this? No. <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's like pantomime, isn't it? It's just yeah. like just, let's pretend. No. 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 Did she make him wear that? Or do you think that was his idea? I don't know. I, I think that they have to, they, you'd have to wear that. But I, I, I'm pretty sure they were taking the piss out of him because he's a white boy. Of course. Yes, they're all you, laughing you don't, at Don't him. think they respect you, mate. They don't. They're the kind of people who will talk about you in front of your face in a different language. That's what you're dealing with. And I'm sure it's driving you mad that they do that. It has to be. Oh, also, there was a super chat that said, do you think Cog and Dan fuck? Somebody said in chat. I don't know if you... Oh, boy. I would hate to well, think about that, actually, but... He has got a history of cuckoldry. Well, anything's possible with Cog. Uh, uh, I, I cannot confirm or deny. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mandy G was mentioned... Um, I didn't actually know the lore about this. Uh, I know oh, a little God. bit of it recently. Yeah. Uh, it's a very dark tale. Uh, mm. It's particularly dark since he calls me a monster and all this and that. Well, I've never had anything like this uh, on my record mm. or, or anywhere close. Uh, but what do you know about that situation? I, I just want to say my heart goes out to weird juice. Like, dude, I, 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 I know it's not much, but I apologize for for everything my brother's put you through. That was some fucked up shit. Like, he he just would not stop. Like, it was obvious she was legit. For most people with a brain cell to rub together, it was obvious she was legit. 
but he just wouldn't stop. He believed he was some kind of catfish, and he blatantly wasn't. I think I even may have even mentioned it, like, dude, why, why are you going after her? This is, this is nothing. But he just wouldn't stop. He just wouldn't stop. He wouldn't stop. And she's, you know, she's going through hell. Uh, Air juice is there for her. But he, he has to insert himself into people's relationships. He has to push them apart because he's miserable. And anyone have any kind of happiness, he has to just kind of get in there, break it all up, fuck it up. It, it's it's disgusting behavior. And even and, and and even after she passed, like he just he wouldn't stop. He he doxed her. He doxed her entire family, which was absolutely disgraceful. That's monstrous behavior, like you said. And I can't only like it just I. It's like he he was trying to rob you from the last moments you had, the the, the last moments of happiness you had, man. That's that's I stuff you can't get back. That's that I that's a level of fucked up lack of moral value. I, I can't even, I don't really have words for how unbelievably disgusting that behavior was. Yeah, it's sickened me. Absolutely sickened me. Now, it's just one of the many things that sickened me, but Jesus Christ, it was like literally f- so fucked up. And, and so. many people have described it to me as him basically like p- p- pushing her into the grave almost. You know what I mean? Like, uh, basically, yeah. That amount of stress, someone constantly harassing you, constantly, day in, day out, non-stop. And all you want to do is just try and enjoy the last, you know, whatever you've got left. And hopefully you may have some more if, if they come through for you. And all you got is this little dickhead online pecking at you constantly. Because he can't stand the fact that somebody he used to work with is happy. So, so would he, you know, someone else in the world is happy and actually has something that's, that's more real than he's ever had. It, then, uh, yeah, it's just, and then after she I died, can't. he he spiked the football uh, to use an American term, uh, and and celebrate that's my understanding at least that he continued, uh, he didn't give a fuck, he right. didn't give a fuck that she was dead, he didn't give a fuck that he wrote, rode her to the grave, he didn't give a fuck. He's an absolute monster. And again, I you know I didn't even know about all this uh, until last week, and I actually didn't know, like I didn't follow Cog that much back then, unless something you know crazy happened, like the Cuck Week and the Cuck Christmas and all this stuff. Um, but I didn't know that he had done that to Ear Juice and to Mandy. Like I I didn't even know that bit of lore. Yeah, and I can completely understand why Ear Juice. <laughs> Hates this motherfucker. Uh, I, 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 yeah, yeah. But I, I had no clue. I had no clue about that, and um, I feel like a, it's, it's a so lot fun. of people didn't know. Um, you know, those who were plugged in at the time on what he was doing know about it, but I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know that, or I would have brought it up mm-hmm. before uh, because it's that fucked up. Uh, now, speaking of of fucked up things, I'm crossing off the list here. We're getting, we're getting down to it. Um, Michael's another brother of yours, and I had him on my show. Yes, yes. Uh, and Cog was working with him, and was stealing his beats. He's a beat thief, uh, as, we, <laughs> as we call him here uh, on the show. He's a beat thief, and yeah, uh, he had a he had a falling out with Michael. Then he mm-hmm. like trashed the fuck out of him on his show, and this was around the time he had started going at me. So I yeah. re- I reached out to Mike and had him on the show, and he was great. He was funny, uh, and we we laughed about Cog and made fun of him. And mm-hmm. um, on the show, it wasn't actually on my show that he made this allegation, but yeah. um, he made an allegation about Cog f- having sex with uh, you would call it statutory rape in the United States. I don't know what they call it there, yeah. but uh, a 14 year old girl when he was about 29 or 30 uh, is what yeah. he said. Now he made this allegation, not on my show, but uh, a year or so later. And then I played it. He, he made a Vokaroo uh, voice note. It was a bit lengthy and I played the whole thing on, on my show. So it was aired on my show, but he didn't actually say it during that, during that first interview. And this is after Johnny had done something else to him. Right. Yeah. Um, and if you go back and watch the interview that, that we did, um, you can like things that you're saying, 
uh, yeah. here today. Um, things that we found out about Cog without a doubt since, like they all have proven mm-hmm. to be accurate, right? So going back and rewatching yeah. it um, just adds more veracity to his claims, in my opinion, because uh, a lot of the stuff he said has been, has borne fruit, right? It's it's been proven to be true. Uh, that's so why that's I think it's bizarre. He's, sorry, it's, it's why he, I think it's bizarre. He puts himself on such a pedestal. Well, to see that it's like it's. It's it's a house of cards that he's building. Like he's it's like he's done so much shitty stuff, and he's done shitty stuff online. He's done shitty stuff in the in the real world. Like don't don't make yourself out to be some moral virtuous person. Like I mean, you Ralph, you you've you've had your your, your yeah. things here and there, but you kind of own it, right? Yes, you kind of own that you you're a human being. You've made a lot of mistakes, and you're like, yeah, well, you know, I fucked up. I, there's more respect for that man. No, I didn't. No, I didn't do that. No, no, no. <laughs> well, he's never been wrong in his life. <laughs> I mean, I'm never wrong. I'm consistent and honest. It's like, dude, if someone's saying that, they're lying through their fucking teeth at you. Someone who's honest doesn't have to tell you they're honest. Someone who's consistent doesn't have to tell you they're consistent. In fact, there's a funny thing we say in our family. Just keep Johnny talking long enough, and he will fuck up. So all you got to do. He will contradict himself. You keep him talking long enough, he will contradict himself. You watch his streams. Pay attention. He contradicts himself all the fucking time. Well, because he's got so many lies. Uh, and when you lie so much... Uh, you can't it, keep up with You can't yeah. keep up with yeah. it unless you're like really smart, maybe. He's not. <laughs> no. Uh, no, he's, so, been, he's too so many lies. When you're stupid and you're a pathological liar, uh, it gets yeah. outed fairly often because you can't keep up with your life. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, that's one of Cog's major problems, uh, actually, yeah. is that he can't keep up with the lies in his head, like owning his house, which we know is not true, uh, or Dan <laughs> doesn't live with him, you know, which we know is not true. Um, because mm-hmm. it doesn't make any sense for one that the, the little girl's on the stream no. every single day, right? Like it's like okay, well, why is she there? That's the address. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's like it's not. It doesn't make any sense. Just the own it. Owned by both his sisters. Like, yes. come on, man. Yes, and it's been proven, and the documents are out there. Like it's 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 there. Like it's not his house. Um, mm-hmm. and, and like you said before, he's never been wrong either. You know, I've done some bad shit. Uh, and I don't come out here and claim to be the king of morality and for good reason, <laughs> right? Because I'm not, uh, and there's certainly some things yeah, I've done. You're human. Right. What a crazy idea. Being human is to wear, to wear is human. There's certainly some things I've done <laughs> that I regret, um, that, that were bad. There's some bad things I've done that I don't regret too. Uh, yeah. if you want me to tell you the truth, um, mm. but I've, I've, I've lived, <laughs> right? Uh, and there's some, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, and there's there's certainly some things I wish I could take back uh, that I've done towards people or said about people or relationship stuff, etc. Um, but you know, those things happened, and that's why I don't come out of here and pretend to be the king of integrity like he does right <laughs> um you king know morality. right the Just... king of morality um i of course i mean i would say i have more integrity than cog because i'm honest about these things that have happened yeah um but as far as morality, you know, I've done some immoral things uh, from time to time, and you know that's just the way it is. Now, one of the immoral things, first off, well, before let's finish up on that. Do you believe? <laughs> do you believe okay. the the pedo allegation is what I have written down here that, that he fucked uh, a fourteen-year-old? Okay. Right. Well, first of all, uh, I know the girl definitely exists uh, because the family were kind of pissed off about. Uh, um, being underage and drinking, uh, which they kind of, because Johnny tends to be at the butt of people's jokes, even though he doesn't realize it in the family, um, that they were they were uh, they were kind of ribbing him over it because they just thought it was weird. Like um, now, I never personally met her. Uh, the rest of the family members did, so I know she exists. It's definitely true. Uh, Michael making the allegation, I honestly don't think he would lie about something that serious. That's that's the truth of it. In fact, Michael tends to have a lack of filter, so yeah, he tends to just say what's on his mind. He tends to just say it how it is. So yeah, I I, I actually believe it. Yeah, he's, he's uh, 
yeah, he did the thing. Um, yeah, it's not something you want you to think of your brother. It really isn't. Uh, I find it hard to even say it because it's just. Well, it's disgusting. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's messed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's messed up. Uh, Real messed up. But what, what am I supposed to do about it? You know, how am I supposed to prove it? <laughs> it's like it's just it's just yeah, I've got that now knowledge in my head that my brother's a, a degenerate like pedo. It's like it's fucked. All I'd say is, Dan, get your fucking kid away from you. It's creepy. It's grooming behavior. What he's doing, sitting down and having tea parties with your kid. No, that's the kind of things a dad should do. Not what some random guy who's just come into your family, married into it, should be doing. Not at all. Certainly should be taking him to Alice in Wonderland and stuff all the time, which is a, it's a weird obsessive thing about the Alice in Wonderland. And, and and Alice in Wonderland was written by a guy who's known for having like sexual feelings towards an underage girl. Like that's that's the whole thing. Like it's it's very weird. I don't know if he's trying to go with if I own the pedo that I that no one will think of a pedo, but it's, it's not working out, mate. I don't know what to tell you. I'm glad you mentioned that about Alice in Wonderland because I'd actually forgotten that. <laughs> oh, yeah, Lewis Carroll. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's yes. who she is, the big character. Yes. Alice is, is a girl they had a uh, serious fascination with, let's just say. It's a not a healthy one. <sighs> Well, I, you know, I always believed it because he never told me any lies uh, in our interview. Uh, if anything, he was holding back uh, on Cog, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, and well, it, it didn't feel good for him to. I mean, well, it doesn't no. feel good to do this, but I, I, I don't know what how I know he's going to be watching your show. He's so obsessed. He's definitely watching this. Oh yeah. And it's just honestly, I just wanted to seek psychological help. Because the stuff he is doing is what, not what normal human beings do. It's not normal human behaving, behavior to do what you're doing. And Dan, seriously, get that kid away from him. Because one day she's going to have some stories you don't want to fucking hear. That's if you care about your kid, Dan. If you don't, just just ignore her. Let it, let it carry on. Because that's how this stuff happens. He's blatantly showing signs of grooming behavior. That's all I'm going to say. It's pretty fucking obvious. He may pass it off as a joke or a meme, but it ain't. It's, it's serious shit. Like, I ain't got no love for you or your family, but I, I, it's an innocent kid. I ain't got nothing to do with any beef or anything that's going on. Just, just get away from it. Well, I feel the exact same way, and I know a lot of people who watch this show... And even some who watch his show feel the exact same. Of course, some of his audience are haters, right? Like, and so it's like, dude, this is not normal behavior, particularly when we know that he plied a 14-year-old with alcohol and f had sexual relations with the 14-year-old. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, if, uh, got her drunk and fucked. I, I mean, I... Not that it would be any better. It maybe I don't know. I, not that that would be any better if she had been sober, but like that's the type of like that's predatory yeah. behavior, right? Yes. Uh, and in every way possible, she's underage, and you're plying her with alcohol to have sex with her. Like, um, and he's acting very creepy around this little girl who's even younger. Um, the Alice in Wonderland thing. Like, I, I yeah. mean, th there's red flags, and then there's, like, th the gigantic fucking red <laughs> yeah. flag of all time, right? Like a neon letter saying pedo alert. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're ignoring that, then I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, and maybe Dan doesn't care. I don't know, but um, I... Some people don't. Yeah, maybe he doesn't, uh, but I... Again, it's beyond, you know, outing Cog or talking shit about him. And some of these stories are funny, but this story's not funny. Um, this is fucked no. up. And, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I, I don't think he can talk any sense to Dan because he's mongoloid. But but I, I would hope maybe one day uh, it doesn't turn out like you like you said. And there's a story yeah. to be yeah. told uh, by his daughter to her father about what Uncle Cog did to her. Well, she'll never say to her father. She'll say to a therapist. You're right. Well. That's why you disowned her parents because they did nothing. That's how that usually ends. Now, let me, and again, this is a, this is a sore su a subject, obviously, but we were watching Cog's meltdown, and again, you know, you said 
you wouldn't do the interview and, and until he did yeah. what he did. Now we both kind of knew correct. he probably would do what he did, but you you pointedly said no, I'm not going to unless he you know takes it further, which of course he did. Uh, mm-hmm. And so here we are, here we sit, and have been sitting. Um, during this, he he has a complete meltdown uh, about you, about your wife, um, you know, saying all kinds of wild shit. But he said something in particular about your father's passing and your um, uh, conversation. He alleged a conversation uh, between yeah. you and your father uh, while while he was dying. You know, taking you know having his yeah. last, having his last yeah. moments. Now, m- me in particular, um, who I didn't get to be with my father when he died, and I didn't get to be with my mother when 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 she died. So this is like a, a really sore point for me in my life mm-hmm. um but um i that's just a separate subject but that's one reason why it stuck out to me so much though uh because i didn't mm-hmm. have that uh in my life and i would give anything to have had that yeah. uh yeah. and so it's a blessing to be able to see your parents off uh and unfortunately not everybody is able to do that um you were and what he said about that interaction now i know it's bullshit um but i just want to give you a chance to address it because i thought that was the most appalling part of his stream full of appalling moments it was a purpose low blow he wanted to get a rise out of me like immediately he wanted he he's been waiting for this like you know he's been probably losing his mind wondering what i'm gonna say um so he went for the low blow he always does um to try and get you to react the way he wants you to but I, I don't respond to that shit very well uh, obviously what he said it would take an incredibly callous human being to uh, go in and say anything like that no I, I, I bawled like a baby it's my dad he's dying and I, I cried my eyes out I apologized to him but we, we, it was a, we had a tenuous relationship I'm not going to lie about that um, it was it was it was hard um, but I, there was a lot of time lost is all I could think like so much between us and there was just so much time lost and I said I was I was so angry for so long um, and I was sorry for it I'm just bawling my eyes out the whole time um, and I was just trying to give him closure I was trying to just make him go off and, and I was like you were right about everything I'm sorry it was, it was all the stuff you say to make passing easier that's all I was trying to do. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it, shit. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'd go and say this to God. Oh, I hate him. So, no. No, when you face someone face to face, you're just like, he's just a man. He made mistakes, and he's dying, and he's my dad. But no matter what happened, that, that stands true. You know, he wasn't the best father at times, but sometimes he was pretty good. He was just a dude. He was a man. He made mistakes. Sometimes he did all right. That's, that's how it goes with parents. They're just people. And I think people don't forget. They forget that. And, and, but when you're staring them in the face, you, you remember it. You, you, you realize it. You know? And it's, yeah, it's just why this passing to be as easy as possible. There's no way I would have said any of that. It was literally the most obvious and blatant lie I've ever fucking heard from him. Just, just one in a whole series of them. But yeah, it, it was just to try and get a rise out of me. Like, I, I, just maybe start crying there. I'm not gonna lie because I, it's it's so I, ridiculous. I, um, like I said, I didn't get to see um my mother at her ultimate passing because of COVID, and there was this ten day waiting period yeah. when she went to hospice care, and she died before I could see her. But I'd been by her bedside uh for many months, um previous to that and what you said there really uh struck a chord with me because um w- when you're growing up um even when you get grown sometimes you forget that your your parents are just people right they're, they're yeah, just a yeah. person like you 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 have them uh, on this pedestal or they should have done they this, can't make it they can, this kind of yes odd, right yeah, yeah, yeah they should have done this or they did that and i'm still angry about that and and or, or whatever mm-hmm. you know uh and even though I wasn't there with her in her last moments, I, I did get to 
to apologize to her um, b- yeah. before her passing, and, and it was just like you know you see. You, you see them in a different way when they're laying there dying and um the weak the yes. frail yes and you, you just how it goes out the all good that way. goes like, out the window and yeah, you know yeah. I, I i just apologize to her for not being a better son really uh yeah. and thank you for everything you did for me uh now unfortunately mm-hmm. i wasn't there at the very end but i did get to say those things uh, to her and um, you know it, it's something that you know I wish I had realized sooner uh, and you know that's just life right yeah. um, but you know your parents are just are just people doing the best they can uh, for the most yeah. part you know if there are some truly yes. evil yeah. people out there or whatever but like um, your parents are just doing the best they can and um, when you see them in that state, uh, it, it really changes. Uh, it really changes your yeah. your, your mindset. Uh, and for him to lie about that, and I said this on air while we were yeah. watching it, that was really just one of the sickest things I've ever seen online. That's I've a mask. Slip. A sick, I've seen a lot of sick shit. Right? The, uh, the mask slipped for a moment. Some people saw it. Some people did. It's mask slipped. It slipped a few times during that stream. Yes. You saw who he really was. That vicious, nasty piece of shit that he is. And, and it's interesting that uh, you, you, he, he, what he said about his last words to my father um, was that he was more bothered about himself, it seems. like He was like, I wanted him to be proud of me, which uh, is, is a really deep insight into his psychology, that he wants validation all the time from everyone and everything. It's all about him. He wanted validation. It wasn't about my dad. It was about him. It was about being validated. And he does that with the internet. He's constantly wanting validation from people. He'll make up some bullshit, and it's like, oh, well, they said it's okay, therefore I'm validating. It, it's really weird behavior. It's a really odd thing that that was the most key thing that he brought out of his last couple of moments with my father was more about him than my dad. It's, I'm just, just going to put it out there. It's like It just seems a little odd to me that. Yeah, it is odd because it's supposed to be about them and making yes. their passing easier. Not, oh, Dad, mm-hmm. uh, be proud of me. Uh, say something nice to me, right? Like, that's not what it's supposed yeah, to be yeah. about. No. no. It's insane. Boss, a Smaster uh, 33 cent $1 <laughs> on Rumble. 109 <laughs> brothers, but it's never Cog's fault. A Smaster says 109 brothers, but it's never Cog's fault. <laughs> that's what he said there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I've I've noticed that. I've noticed that. Um, and you know, you, you guys, you have what eight brothers? I think you said um, the seven brothers seven. say poison total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, eight in total with seven brothers. Yeah, and that's wild. By the way, seven brothers. Yeah, my mom was a trooper. Holy I'm telling you, shit. that is yeah. like a Herculean task. Uh, like holy shit. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's never Cog Swalt in anything. Not just with his brothers, though. Well, no. Uh, and any any story he tells, it's never his fault. And you know, I'm sitting here to tell you, there's plenty of shit that's my fault, uh, and, <laughs> including some stuff that happened last year and all this. You know, a lot of that was my fault. Uh, a lot of that was just mistakes I made, and you just have to you just have to mm-hmm. live with them. Uh, but part yeah. of living with them is owning them. And accepting yeah. that you fucked up and you can't get it back. You just have to move on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and lying to yourself is is, uh, is is not a winning strategy. Uh, and it ends up making you miserable. Uh, and it, it, it makes your, your life uh, less pleasant. Right, right? You know what I mean? If you're just always yeah. lying to yourself, it's, it's, just, it's just, I don't know. Um, well, nothing's real. Yeah, and that's I think that's why where, where the lines are blurred with him is that he thinks the internet is real. He thinks that's the real life. That's 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 who he is. That's the real world. It's like the internet is a fantasy space. You, anyone could be whoever they want to be on there. That's the truth of it. The real world, and when you start bringing internet to the real world, that's that's when you got issues, man. You got, you got to keep that stuff separate. Like it's not it's, the internet isn't real. You, you never life. true words have, have have never been spoken, and I've made that same mistake, uh, and it's it fucked up my life uh, in yeah. some big ways. Uh, bringing the internet into my, my personal relationships or putting that stuff out there, and 
you know, going to war with so and so, and you know, you you can get into this mode where it's it's war every day on the internet. <laughs> Most people laugh, oh, war, quote unquote, yeah. but it's always some kind of fight, right, or some type of drama. Yeah. Uh, and when you let that bleed over into your personal relationships, into your personal life and you let that become part of the content or this person said this he used to be in my life let me strike back at him through my platform and this and that and it can feel good uh and you know i'm not perfect on it even to this day uh but it's always a mistake uh and yeah. it always leads to misery for yourself not yeah. for the other person well, right? well the uh, internet's the greatest it's the greatest video game ever made is the internet and it's like getting butt hurt in a video game and then going and attacking someone in the streets. That's mental. That's dementoid behavior. It's, it's, it's like if someone's at a Call of Duty, like killing someone, and then they start bringing a gun around and shooting everyone in there. You're going to think they're a little bit psycho, right? <laughs> the the internet's no different. It's like it's just they've just got all but her and they're rage quitting and they've decided to come back and, and attack you in real life for something that happened in a virtual space. It's insane. We've given the internet way too much power and it shouldn't have any because it's literally a fantasy realm. I agree. I agree with you. Um, and I'm, I'm seeing, let me look through chat here. Also, hit like chat if you've enjoyed this. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of, I, I think we hit most, most of our points really. Uh, but first I want to ask you if there's anything, um, that you wanted to say or a story you wanted to tell that you haven't gotten to tell. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll throw something together that you guys don't know about. Okay. So it was an interesting part of Hulk stream where he started attacking my genetics, my DNA. Uh, the interesting point is that I am the eldest. What's the interesting thing about Johnny is that he was born after my father had a vasectomy. Uh, yeah. A smash no, 33 it, sent one dollar. Yeah, 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 yeah. The intended uh, so, day. Uh, so my dad had a vasectomy. It didn't go quite right. He had a reversal back. And then Johnny was born shortly after that. So, zero yeah. Sent genetics, $1 dude. Don't, don't even was go Johnny there. He's like the ugliest guy in the whole family. He's like he hit every branch of the tree. I mean... Maybe he's comparatively good looking to some other guys, but in the family, out of all the brothers, he's the ugliest, and we all know it. And he probably knows it as well. So, that yeah. That's an interesting story, actually. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, so, yeah, the, I'm not entirely sure how it happened, but he happened, and there he is. Um, I guess he was a Christmas miracle or something. <laughs> He knows about Christmas miracles, Paul. Uh, <laughs> uh, Assmaster says the internet is gay. It fucks guys. Uh, Anton says, was Johnny ever diagnosed with Asperger's or narcissistic personality disorder as a child? He is never going to go and see a therapist because he's far too narcissistic for that. Like, no. Like, my mom had eight kids. Like, by the time he came along, it was, like, seven kids to, like, take care of. And, yeah, she was a bit busy. She had college and stuff going on. So she kind of probably didn't pick up on any kind of weird psychological traits he had growing up. Um, because she had a, she had enough going on. Um, he clearly has some form of autism, though. Oh, he is. I think he's sociopathic. I think he's got narcissism sociopathic and i think he really needs some actual clinical help and he needs to get on meds to deal with his sociopathy i don't think he knows how to feel and that's why he goes after the people because they feel and he takes advantage of empathy he uh anyone who cares he takes advantage of it uh he'll twist things uh he'll use things where you don't know kind of thing it's like that's part of the sociopathy is that i this i've done this thing but you don't know about it and he kind of gets off on that uh, or I've told you this thing, but it's not the full truth, but you don't know that, but I do, and he gets off on that. Um, I'm, I'm giving you, like I said, half-truths, which is where someone tells you, oh, you'll, you'll hide a truth between, uh, a lie between two truths, and, and things like that. It's all just mind fuckery, but that's kind of how he gets his kicks, because he doesn't really feel anything. He just gets some 
mild amusement uh, out of other people's misery because and 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 twisting people up. Um, it, it's, it's kind of messed up. I don't think he can handle the people being happy because he genuinely can't feel it. I don't think he generally feels any kind of real emotion. I think his tears are crocodile tears. Because it's funny, he's crying one second, the second the gift but nobody these wanted. broke up me next the second. Ethan Ralph is on, he's sharing away, he's chap is it's so fake. But he's over the years he's getting he's he's got used to trying to integrate into society and, and trying to integrate in like faking the emotions, what he thinks you're expecting. But then what an actual person who isn't mental would actually behave like. I, you hit the nail, nail on the head. He acts like, right. He's like, he's, <laughs> he's faking the emotion or what he should be feeling. Mm -hmm. right? Like, uh, to yeah. try to blend in. Whereas he doesn't feel, if anything, I feel too much, uh, in yeah. anger and <laughs> sadness and happiness, uh, you know, Right, like uh, that's actually my problem is feeling and caring too much, right? Too much heart on my sleeve, mm -hmm. uh, and it works against me sometimes. Now, some people like it too because you know, I it's, it's like I'm an emotional character, right? Uh, yeah. And so you know, it it's a connection, but it's also a hindrance, right? Or it's like this guy mm. feels too much. I was talking about it earlier, like he lies about me, this and that, like this some some yeah. things that that should just roll off my back don't because I, I feel too much, right? I, I, I yeah, just can't yeah. turn that off. Uh, I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to get better at it. <laughs> but, um, but if anything, that's my problem. Whereas I watch him and it's like, you know, the, 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 the fake, fake laughter or not understanding sarcasm at all. Yeah. Um, not understanding <laughs> jokes. Like these are all signs of, of a guy who is not like, real I mean, he's a real human but he's not yeah. you know what i mean he doesn't have the, uh, the real emotional there's something connection. not go going yes. up there something's not sparking up there uh the other thing with sociopathy is uh you'll see his aggression like people think that's an emotion it's not it's a survival instinct he's that's why he goes after people who threaten his survival his business his money uh because that's what he's about it's like that's money is tied to his survival Anyone he goes after, he gets vicious at. Um, he'll even try and he'll do everything in his power to discredit them, even before they've even said anything, which I always find amusing. Why call someone a liar when they're before they've said it rather than after? If you're saying it before, then it's like you've got something to hide. Because he's trying to you say it out. after, yeah. then you can actually make an argument. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really obvious to anyone who's on to his game. Um, but that's the thing. It is. It's. It's just really weird. It's. He's very about. It's. It's all about him, and he can't feel. He can't feel any emotion. It's hard to understand sociopathic behavior and the psychology of it. Um, I, I. I spent a few years just looking it all up because I thought it was interesting. I. I assume me. I had time on my hand, and I thought human psychology was fun. <laughs> so I, I read books. You remember those? <laughs> remember books? <laughs> Reading <laughs> read what? Kyle Reading, know I know, about right? that Unless it's Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Crazy but... idea. Yeah, I, I, I read a lot of psychology books, which was which was quite interesting in science too. Uh, like, I like you know serial killers and stuff like. That. It's, it's 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 disturbing stuff, but at the same time, I it's it's coming from a perspective where you're not so empathic. Yeah. yeah, it's fascinating how people can. It's the the they use the same kind of stratagems and the same kind of like mentality and this, you see these these uh, patterns of behavior and yeah I see a lot of those patterns of behavior in Carl uh, and, and it is disturbing and he, he fucking needs help uh, I see the Dick Show in chat. Dick Masterson he says he acts like an accident. Uh, is what he said. Uh, Ass Master said, "LOL, contraceptive cog, the gift nobody wanted, the Dudley Dud." Uh, is, is what they say there. Um, now predictions for. Co By the way, everything happened just like uh, we were talking. And you, you didn't want to do the interview at first, but you're like, I know what he'll do, and we probably will end up doing the yeah. interview because he, he, yeah. will, he will unload. He will lose his I mind. wanted to give him the opportunity to not be an absolute spastic. And you did. But... You totally did. Like, I, people <laughs> yes. know because he deserves it, right? I don't want to be dragged into sure. the clout. 
I don't care about that shit. I just want to get on my life and be left the fuck alone, to be honest with you. Well, like I said earlier... I just, I just don't want people using my words as a shitty yes. defense against allegations that turn out to be... Well, they're probably true. They're most likely true. Because it's, 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 it's pretty obvious. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> He's a knot. And as they say in England. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I... Like I said, people know my history with him, and he's, you know, taking delight and trying to ruin my life for years and years and attack. He didn't do any attacking, but set up an mm. attack in the street. And so, of course, I jumped out immediately to try to get Anonymous you on the show. Hold on one second. I'll let this super chat Why play. did Cog and his wife meet? Um, Can you go into more detail I'll, I'll about it. how Cog and Dan's situation with their respective partners came about? It's All very right, weird, TBH. I'll ask that. Uh, but I jumped on it immediately, and I was like, well, let's, you know, let's go. Let's set it up, man. You know, you're out here. Come on. Uh, and Paul was like, no, I don't I don't really want to do that, um, you know, but we'll, we'll see how he reacts. Uh, he probably will go over the line, and so we probably will end up doing it, right? Uh, and yep. that's what happened. He just immediately lost it off one tweet. We're just like, hey, could you just stop using my name to justify, you know, fucking the fourteen-year-old, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. or, right, like, or to defend against that? Stop yeah. using this really shitty argument yeah. that doesn't make any sense anyway. Right. It's just deflection. Just, just address the allegation rather than avoiding it, which just makes you look guilty because you are. And it's he... real simple. It, it was so obvious. You don't do that. <laughs> just don't. Plus, he's been doing it for years. He's been citing that. He's been citing yeah. that. And you said one or two things, and he's like, oh, well, my other brother said more. When he was was cite- yeah, go ahead. When he was citing it, uh, uh, you know, whatever, he's chat shit. When he, that mind virus creeps into other people saying it, I had to stamp it out. I'm not having that spread around. I just brought in the vaccine and dealt with it. That's where I see it. <laughs> Also, the on sheen, uh, on-screen chat froze. Okay, I'll fix that. That happens uh, sometimes. And then I'll, I'll ask this this question. But give me a chance to, to fix that first. Um, I don't know why the Rumble Pastor does that, but it does. Let's see if we can fix that real quick. Hurry up, Power Chat, and fix. Come on. So I can switch over to the other screen and ask this question because it was sent in as a super chat. If you have any other questions, Get them in now uh, because I'm going to wrap here in a few minutes. I won't keep I won't keep Paul all night. But anonymous says how and why, and I don't know if you know this, but uh, he says how and why did Cog and his wife meet? You talked a little bit about it, I guess. But um, yeah, he was chatting to online um, just after he got thrown out of his house by Thieves' boyfriend. And we didn't know that, by the way. I, I didn't know that at least that Thieves' boyfriend yeah. literally, literally came. And oh, literally! Yeah, he him. literally physically removed him from the house because he was was not going to leave, and she just sent him around, and just threw him out. Brutal! I imagine she fucked the shit out of him after that. <laughs> like, he showed he was a man, you know. The real man came along. Uh, she was wet him. as October, <laughs> as they say yeah. in the series Rome, which was a bunch of British actors, actually. Oh, well, that's yeah, why he wasn't, she, she was to the Christmas that. Dinner. Uh, he wasn't invited to the Christmas dinner because her boyfriend was there. <laughs> yeah, that's why he was dumped. It's like, yeah. Are you serious? She's there. Yeah, she's there with her fella. That's why he wasn't invited. Because <laughs> it would be weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. He wanted to talk about Christmas dinners, huh? Uh, so he wasn't at her Christmas dinner because she had her real man there. Yeah, her. she had a real man there, yeah. yeah. Oh, That's my right. God. Then he came and physically removed Cog, who embarrassingly yeah. would not leave. I mean, just leave, yeah. right? Like, what the fuck? It's over. He was homeless, and then he was chatting to someone about this and said, oh, don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll chat to some girl, and by the end of the week, I should be at a house. Oh, I've, I've got a place to live. Yeah. Oh. So, I don't know if it, she was okay with that arrangement. That it was a marriage of convenience. He gets a place to live. She gets to marry someone because she's struggling to get married. I don't know. Well, I can see why. But, she's she's not know. struggling to miss any meals. I... I... Uh, or maybe, excuse me, she is struggling to miss any meals. Um, but I shouldn't. Uh, you know what? I shouldn't. By the way, um, 
did you did you hear me call her up the other day? Uh, yeah, were... <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> they actually tried to. She fucked up. She's like, you like, how are you? She's like, oh, I'm fine. She's like, I'm good. He just like, and then she's like trying to pretend. Yes. He just like, dude, it's too late. You already too fucked late. up. Like, stop. <laughs> it's like, just own it. Just, just say, yeah, he is here. And Johnny should have had the balls to talk to you. Well, yeah, that would have been great content, honestly, if he would have yeah. picked up the phone and we could have started talking shit back and you forth. Could have yeah, you could have yeah. shit talked to each other. That'd be great. That would be he great. Could have, he could have owned you on the internet. Well, he's been self owning to, he, him repeatedly. Well, right. Well, he's been saying he wanted to talk to me for years, right? And I'm keep ducking yeah. the conversation. Well, I dialed him up, uh, asked for Jobless Johnny, and she didn't quite understand that. And then I said her name. How you doing? And mm-hmm. I said her name, and then she said, "Oh, I'm good." And then she stopped herself because she realized it was me, I guess. Uh, and so she yeah. then she tried to play dumb and act like she didn't know what was going on. Uh, and then she comes in there, and you can hear her tell Cog that that somebody had just called that I just called the phone number. Like, we oh, knew he got it. really pissed off about it. It's like you could go phone number, blah blah blah. It's, it's he his mask slips. It just damn, he just owns himself every fucking time. It's hilarious. Now, do you have any predictions uh, for first off how Cog might react to this? Uh, this interview, which I thought was pretty uh, thorough, or or uh, for Cog's future, do you think he's going to keep doing the Cog City thing? Or I'm not going to predict how he reacts. You know, I'm just sure it's going to be dumb, or your cell phone, or stupid. I, I don't, I don't know, and I don't really care. At the end of the day, I, I just want to be left alone. Uh, his a future is channel. He'll probably have a few. Mobile. Loyal At least supporters, Jarbo talks back when you call usually him. do. Jarbo, uh, the, balls than he's Cog? or hey. whatever. But honestly, it's like it's not working out for the internet for him. He's he's never going to get to the height he has that he's always wanted. Uh, and that was years ago. This is years before now. Like he's he. There was a point where he's like kind of at his peak, and he's just been going downhill all the way after that. He's never going to reach that again. Just, just reminisce over about the good old days. Move on, get a job. Just, just this, this, this. You know, it's over. This, this whole part of your life, it's, it's kind of over. I mean, you can, you can put it on life support if you want, by all means. But it's just, it's just sad and decrepit on life support. It's something wow. that everyone will mock every now and again and go, "Oh, you, yeah, you, that guy is, he's, he's, a, he's an idiot." I mean, if that's what you want to be, is the the, the fucking clown of the internet, then, then go for it. You know, well, if that's good enough, some people can make a career out of it. Look at DSP. Well, and we, we have we have 500 viewers here. I can't remember, and more on Twitter and some other places. Of course, I've had more viewers in the past too, um, but you know, I can't remember the last time Cog has had 500 viewers. Uh, I I. I struggled to even have a memory of when he had that. Now, he did have a pretty decent audience around the time of Knoxville in 2019 when he was riding mm-hmm. my coattails uh, and basically covering the shit that we were doing. And he was like the the mid-afternoon, uh, you know, Ralph and Worski hour or whatever, and people would drop in. But he alienated mm-hmm. literally everybody. Uh, and it's just been all downhill since. And then he picked – me to like focus on daily and honestly i think that ruined him because yeah it did it, did. it ruined his content it just yes. became boring because it's it just was about boring me every single fucking day it's ralph 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 yes. never ending ralph 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 right my big hard on for ralph it's like i don't care go back to the because the, the my wife's american Yep. And the reason she started watching this show was because it was the only way she could get news from England. Like, British news isn't shown in America, so it's the only way she could actually see what the news in England was talking about. And that was the key reason she watched it. It was just like, she didn't know Black Lives Matter was in, in England, in Manchester and all, in London, until he showed it on his show. He actually had something there. Yes. That, you know, and, and he gave all that up for what? Like he had, he had a fairly. It was a very, it was a topical show. It was very British. It, it covered like politics in a way that you can't really get in America. That kind of gave him a USP. Um, but when he started going the Ralph thing, he, he lost so many people because it's like, 
where's the show I, I actually like? Where's that gone? And the other truth is he doesn't fucking care. It's the reason why his 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 uh his sound bouncing's all over the fucking place. It's the reason why his donations are screeching and annoying for a long period of time. You sort of, like you, he'd be really quiet, and then this this uh this one of his donors would go through, and then it's this big screechy fan. Yeah, he did that on purpose for some fucking reason. He liked to aerate the people with that stuff. Um, but there's only so much aerate people can tolerate before they just go fuck this guy. He's just he's, the dodos are killing me. I, I can't. Yeah, it's I mean, old Ralph all the time. The dodos are annoying me. Why am I even watching this motherfucker? Guy I can watch anyone. Right, and it's like, um, you know, he was able to extract some money out of the people who hate me the most, but, like, yeah. <clears throat> there's no, there's only a certain <clears throat> amount of, even the people who hate me, there's better places to watch other people who hate me. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> yeah. so, so he's, he's pigeonholed himself completely to the point where now, uh, you know, he's talking about switching things up, although he really didn't, and then went right back to covering me again. Um, but but now he's pigeonholed himself so much that I I really don't know that it's possible uh, to to switch off of me or to to actually get back to the to the basics of what he no, has to do. I think he's right? like, to the point of, no, you know? I don't think he can. I don't think he can recover the fan base he basically fucked over. There was a lot of people in his fan base that he got angry with, people called Indian Givers because they accidentally gave him a dono and they gave him too much. I think it was uh, he had the... What's the name of that place? Uh, begins with P. But yeah, it was... It was uh, he used to have a place where people gave money to anyway, and he was like $5 a PayPal. video. Pay, it's not PayPal, it's the other uh, one. Oh, it's the, oh. um, Power chat, oh, well, not power chat, but uh, what people donate, they like to support you. But I forgot yeah. the name. Patreon, of the head, otherwise, yeah, Patreon. That's what, I can't believe that escaped. Yeah, yeah, I think people don't yeah. use it much these days. Um, but yeah, so he had a Patreon, and he'd actually put on like five dollars a video or something. And the guy didn't realize this. He thought it was like five dollars for a month of videos. And so he explains this to him. He's, he's like, he suddenly realized, look at his bank account. Oh shit. Because he's he, he just spammed a lot of videos, like of absolute nonsense a lot of the time, and just you know cop <laughs> videos or something, and then walk away and just leave it running. And so it wasn't really quality content you were paying for anyway. I mean, you're stupid to give money to him in the first place. But he then that that became like he he spent like hundreds of dollars on this because he'd spammed the content. And he's like, I want my money back. Can I, is there anyone get a refund? I kind of made a mistake. Be like the other guy the other day with the four hundred dollars. I that. made a mistake. Yeah, 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 I yeah. So my, my wife's gonna kill me. Oh, I cracked up. Oh, that was fucking hilarious. That was so funny. It was funny. I, I feel for the guy. I really do. I feel bad for him, but it was also hilarious and so cog. Yeah, it's so it's just so on brand for cog. And cog clearly oh. didn't give a fuck about it at all. No. No, he does it. It's like, you yeah, know, tough shit. That's his attitude. It's just tough shit. Uh, but yeah, he did this before with a guy. Uh, I forgot his name. Um, it was Geek something or that. But yeah, he, he basically called him an Indian giver, spent a whole stream ripping him a new one, uh, shaming him. Oh, obviously after blocking him and stuff, so you can't possibly uh, to argue your case. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very dishonest the shit he does. And don't give him money. I mean, I, I, if you want, it's your money. If you want to waste it, I mean, it's plenty of bridges I can sell you. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to tell anyone how to use the money, but, but it's uh, not so wise. It's, uh, it's probably not very you safe. Set to it on fire. It's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You smoke it, wipe your ass with it. There are probably better Rome. uses for that money. This dollar back. Um, life chases me you know, I'm sure he's going to accuse me of attacking his business. It's like, no, this is an end result of you creating shit content and treating your customer base or your consumer base like shit. This is what happens. It happens to Disney and other corporations. You treat you treat your customer base like shit. You don't make money, right? You lose fan base. That's how it works. Shit content, treat them like shit. It's a bad business model. Always has been, always will be. 100% ass master sent a dollar, said, Ralph, I need this dollar back. My wife chases me around with a rolling pin. Uh, and I see Samurai Walrus says, no refunds. No refunds. <laughs> no refunds. No he refunds. said that as well. That was yes. so funny. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> cell phone again. Cell phone again. Jesus Christ. Well, I'd like to think he'll get some help after hearing this, but I, I don't think so. I think this is going to be needs. He, yeah. He's going to listen to every minute. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure he's going to go over it in fine detail. Then he's going to have some super intellectual take on absolutely everything I've said and how wrong I am. I, I, I don't care. I just said it. Take it or leave it. You don't have to believe it. I don't really care. You know, I'm only doing this in response because I actually said I agreed I'd do this if he did something. And he did. I don't know. Man of a word. I just, you know. I was at this point where I was literally thinking, do I, is it kind of overkill? He's kind Spencer, of ruined himself, ruined himself to a point where he's had to rebrand himself, which is what they do when they're trying to distance them themselves to the shit they've She's caused. Eat him. Pray for uh, you see companies do that all the time to try yes. and distance themselves from controversy and shit. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly why he's doing it. Um, but I, I felt like this might be overkill, but I was like, nope, I made an agreement and I'm sticking to it because, man of my word, I, I got to stick to it, man. Well, you were a man of your word, uh, and I appreciate you sticking to it uh, and sticking it to this fuck. Uh, also, there's another super chat. Assmaster says, look at that wedding photo. His wife's got them hungry eyes. She's going to eat him. Pray for Cog. Uh, and, you know, also, I, I, I think I said this on air, but um, you actually reached out to me uh, after uh, Dan's attack in Portugal, mm -hmm. and I didn't see it uh, until, uh, what, a week or two ago, whenever all this started. Yeah. Uh, and so Paul had actually reached out to me after he saw what happened. Uh, yeah, he's sickening. Was appalled and, and sickened by yeah. it. Uh, and I didn't see it. So I just wanted to thank you for that uh, as well. While no I problem. You, while, while I have you here on air, and I'm sorry I didn't see it. Uh, I need to check my request box. Because if you don't <laughs> follow somebody, like, it puts it into a different box, and so, sometimes yeah. I forget to check. No, but, I, I get it. You're a busy guy, and I'm sure yeah. you get all kinds of messages, some nice and some not so some nice. Not so. Uh, yeah, yeah no, some, well, I don't but uh, I I missed that, but uh, I I just wanted to uh, to thank you for that. Uh, yeah, no even problem. Back then, and uh, thank you for your time here today. And if you have anything else uh, you want to say here at the end, I, I think we we pretty much nailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for listening to me. I appreciate it a lot. You're very welcome, Paul. Here live on the kill stream. Thank you, sir. All right, you're welcome. There we go. In the books, Paul was great. Paul the Prince, he's being called in chat. Cog Superior. <laughs> go ahead. A Smaster 33 sent $1 on Rumble. We nailed it. Now let's nail Cog to a cross. Hit the thumbs up, by the way. We need more of those. Hit the thumbs up. Anton says, what an interview. Wow. Thank you for that. And uh, I had some a few notes here. We talked for like five minutes before. Um, but most of that was just, um, you know, just kind of, I like to kind of wing it. But I did have a few points um, that, that we wanted to go over for sure. So I did have a few notes here. Uh, as you can see, they're all crossed out. Uh, we hit everything, uh, and then some. He dropped some jewels uh, that I didn't even know about. Uh, so many nuclear bombs dropped on Cog City. Oh, poor Cog City. Also, there were a couple songs sent in that I didn't get to play by James Gardner. Also, if you like that, can we hit the goal today for the 17th day in a row, I believe today would be? It's a little bit higher today. Uh, because of the Cog Bro exclusive. Let's see if we can hit it. Smoke that Cog pack! Paul Harrison sent $10 time to smoke that Cog. <laughs> Where we at? 